And these are the official references I'll be using for this coaching module. So we have Jowett's Medical Microbiology, the most recent edition of Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine. Then we have the most recent edition of Robbins and Cotran, Pathologic Basis of Disease. We will be summarizing the key features of Chapter 224, Malaria, which is found in Harrison's. And we're going to enter for the next 15 or 20 minutes the world of plasmodium. Now, I want everyone to remember there are four main species of plasmodium that can cause malaria in humans. We have plasmodium vivax, plasmodium falciparum, plasmodium malariae, plasmodium ovale, and it doesn't affect humans, but it is zoonotic, okay? This is seen in the monkeys, particularly the macaques. This is Plasmodium nolesi. Now question, which of these four is the most common worldwide? Which is the most common species worldwide that causes malaria infection in humans? It is falciparum. Now, what is the most common cause of malar malaria in the Philippines? Which species in the Philippines? So in the Philippines, it's also Plasmodium falciparum. Okay, this is also the most common. Now, the transmission of malaria is through the bite of a female Anopheles mosquito. Would anyone happen to know what specific species of Anopheles is notorious? What specific species of Anopheles, Anopheles is notorious for causing malaria? Okay, this is the famous Flavirostris, okay, Anopheles. Flavorostris or flavirostris. So this is the manner of transmission. So number one, of course, is the mosquito bite. In less developed countries that do not have good blood transfusion protocols, you can get malaria from blood transfusion. It is still standard routine to screen for malaria for bl during blood transfusions. Malaria can be transferred through the placenta. Okay, so there's vertical transmission, as well as contaminated syringes and needles. The most common, of course, is the mosquito bite. Now, I want everyone to remember that we have two important cycles in the life cycle of malaria. We have the sexual cycle, then we have the asexual cycle. Now, always remember. The sexual cycle is known as gametogony in humans, and it's known as sporogony in mosquitoes. The asexual cycle in humans, this is known as schizogony. So please be familiar with this. And this holds true for all your major plasmodium species. So the sexual cycle, sporogony in mosquitoes, gametogony in humans, and the asexual cycle, this is schizogony in humans. Now, let's pick up the most important pearls about the pathology and pathogenesis that we have to bring with us to the boards. So first, I want everyone to remember what is the explanation why there is anemia in malaria. This is destruction of the RBCs. It is the merozoites which destroys the RBCs, and this leads to anemia. 
Now, why is there fever in malaria? And why is there a cyclic pattern? Okay, It is because of the release of the merozoites. So three days for malaria, two days for both vivax and ovale. So the release of the merozoites will explain, the variable release of the merozoites would explain the cyclic fever pattern. Now, please remember, why is there kidney damage okay, in malaria? This is because of the RBCs causing occlusion of the renal capillaries. And this leads to the black water fever. But be careful because black water fever, aside from renal damage, it can also present with disseminated intravascular coagulation or DIC. Of the four species of plasmodium we mentioned, falciparum is letter F, fatai. Okay, this is the one with the highest mortality. Fatai, of course, in Filipino means dead. Okay, it is the deadliest. Now, allow me to share this table. I'll give you a copy of this. This is lifted from your microbiology book. Characteristic features of the malarial parasites. Now, I want everyone to remember, okay, the dots. Vivax, okay, gives you the Schaffner's dots. Falciparum is the Maurer's dots. Malaria is what? What is the name of the dots or the stippling you see in malaria? Ovale is Schaffner. Would anyone happen to know what Plasmodium malariae? So ovale can also have the James dots, okay? There's also James dots. Now as to parasitemia, which of the malaria species, okay? Which of the malaria species which of the malaria species has the highest level of parasitemia? Okay. It is falciparum. Okay. Yes, Siemens dots is correct. Now, don't forget that of these four species, which presents with a banana shaped gametocyte? Banana shaped gametocyte. The banana-shaped gametocyte, this is falciparum, a banana shape. It's only the ring and the crescents which are found in the peripheral blood. Okay, so please take note of that. Now another table, so take note, okay, which of the plasmodium species has the longest intrahepatic phase. Okay, the longest intrahepatic phase, which is 15 days, that's malaria. So please remember that. And as to the red cell preference, don't forget, uh, Vivax can affect the reticulocytes up to two weeks old. So the very young and vivacious morphology. So only the ring forms in the peripheral blood. So here's the banana-shaped gametocyte. This is the one that would most likely come out. And as to relapses, don't forget it is only Vivax, which has the ability to cause relapses. 
So these are the things you have to remember. These are the things you have to prepare for in a standard exam, okay? So just some photos okay, of plasmodium. So here, I want everyone to memorize your dots here. Falsifarum, FM. It's Ferdinand Marcos or Ferdinand Magellan. That's Maurer's dots. Vivax, that's VS, that's for Vilma Santos. OJ for OJ Simpson or Orange Juice, that's Ovale and James. MZ, that's Siemens dots. MZ is Manila Zoo. Memorize this by heart. That's a sure ball in your exam. So I hope everyone got that. Now let me share this with you. The clinical features of malaria. So we have three stages. This is known as the cold, the hot, and the sweating stage. Okay, so basically, if you follow the textbook, the cold stage is about an hour, okay, 20 minutes to one hour. The hot stage is about one to four hours. The sweating stage lasts about two to three hours. So basically, the total duration of the febrile episode is about six to 10. So I like to remind students that six sounds like the word sick. Okay, they are sick for about at least six hours. So cold stage, hot stage, and sweating stage. So this is how it's going to look like. Okay, the cold, 20 minutes to an hour, the hot stage, a couple of hours, the sweating, a couple of hours. So during the cold stage, uh, the patient who has malaria would complain of vigorous shaking. Okay, there's a feeling of intense coldness. And this lasts basically 15, 20 minutes to 60 minutes. Basta, it's less than an hour. Or does not go beyond an hour. The hot stage is now the feeling of intense heat. So always remember, what comes first is the coldness. The skin is dry and burning and there's a throbbing or pulsating headache. This can last two to six hours. And lastly, we have the sweating stage, which as the name indicates, there, this is characterized by profuse sweating. The temperature starts to drop. This is when the patient looks extremely weak. They look exhausted. There's now increased sleeping time, and this would also last for about two to four hours. So please take note of this. Now, I want to mention these two terminologies, particularly the types of the fever, because this is what's going to come out in exams. So always remember, the type of fever is synchronized with the erythrocytic schizogony. Question, what is the schizogony? Is this sexual or asexual? What is the schizogony? Is this sexual or asexual? Okay, so this is now the asexual. So we have the famous tertian fever, which means you have a 48-hour cycle and the fever recurs every third day. Quartan fever is a 72-hour cycle and the fever recurs every fourth day. So tertian, every third day. Quartan, cuatro, every fourth day. Please memorize this. And winding down, these are the things you would have to bring with you to your boards. Conditions that present with resistance to malaria. We have G6PD or glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. Now, don't forget, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is the rate-limiting enzyme 
for the pentose phosphate pathway or the hexose monophosphate shunt. This is the one that yields NADPH as well as glutathione, which is required to protect the RBC from oxidative stress. Patients with G6PD deficiency, okay, G6PD deficiency would basically present with hemolytic anemia. Patients with uh, hemoglobin, hemoglobinopathies, such as hemoglobin S, that's the sickle cell anemia, okay, problems with the globin chain, like thalassemias, hemoglobin C and E, and the Duffy group negative individuals would present with resistance to malaria. If your exam is five minutes from now, memorize the G6PD, memorize the sickle cell anemia. Now the sickle cell anemia is a missense mutation. This is a missense mutation, which results from substitution of two very important amino acids. We have valine and glutamic acid. Valine and glutamic acid. This is the exact mu mutation, which is a missense mutation, is going to occur at position six of the beta globin chain, resulting instead of the biconcave shape of the RBC, it will be shaped like an S or a sickle, predisposing it to early hemolysis. Okay, so that ends our very short coaching module for malaria. Thank you for listening.